It is hard to believe who is at fault for the largest wildfire in the history of New Mexico, which continues to spread tonight and has so far injured three firefighters. The blaze, which at this point has destroyed at least 330 homes, and displaced thousands, was not due to an arsonist or a pyromaniac. No, the U.S. Forest Service is at fault. You heard me correctly. I'm stunned that the story has not gotten more attention. The now combined Calf Canyon Hermit's Peak fire has burned more than 312,000 acres and has for the past two months forced thousands to evacuate. Forest Service investigators have confirmed that the fire came from what are called controlled burns. They lost control of it. A controlled burn involves setting planned fires to maintain the health of a forest. The agency has not made it clear how they lost control of the controlled burn. But the Forest Service chief, Randy Moore, has said they will pause its use of prescribed fires on agency lands, conduct a 90-day review of protocols. Statement, they said Forest Service oversees an average of 4,500 prescribed fires each year, and in 99.84% of cases, prescribed fires go as planned. I don't know if that's a statement I would have put out, but officials in the state obviously want answers, including New Mexico's governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham, who released a statement saying, in part, the pain and suffering of New Mexicans caused by the actions of the U.S. Forest Service, an agency that is intended to be a steward of our lands, is unfathomable. It's evident that the federal government must take a hard look at their fire management practices and make sure they account for a rapidly changing climate. New Mexico and the West must take every precaution to prevent fires of this magnitude from occurring especially as precipitation levels continue to decrease, temperatures rise. Joining me now is Matthew Herto. He's a professor and fire ecologist at the University of New Mexico there. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. All right, so how does something like this happen? When they say 99.84 percent, I, I believe that number, but when you get, you know, this kind of disaster, it does make you wonder when you don't follow these things the way I don't, how the heck something like this can happen? Sure, uh, that's a great question. The, the, basically what's happening is the, the rule book is changing uh, as a result of climate change. And so the, these ecosystems are a lot drier than they ever were before uh, because the atmosphere is a lot warmer, uh, sucks moisture out of them and it makes the ecosystem more reactive. Uh, so they're, they're trying to manage that risk with prescribed burning uh, and have protocols in place to do that uh, but I don't think that those protocols necessarily account for uh, changing climate. But uh, again, so you've provided for us an explanation of how something like this can happen, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not as if what you just said is news to the United States Forest Service, right? I mean, the notion that you're telling me, well, you know, there are these protocols in place, um, and apparently they didn't incorporate this enormous one that you're telling us about, which obviously you've studied, um, is, I think, very hard for an ordinary person to accept and just say, oh, well, you know, I guess they didn't incorporate that into their protocols. How do they not incorporate that into their protocols? Yeah, so things are changing incredibly rapidly. We've seen massive growth in fires uh, over the last few years. And actually, uh, we, we did some work on this uh, that came out earlier this year showing an exponential increase uh, in, in, the area, in the forested area burned by wildfire uh, that's resulting from uh, increased atmospheric dryness, right? So how dry that air is and how hot it is. And, and so these changes are happening much faster uh, than a lot of the protocols get developed. Uh, it's, you know, and I, I think that we need, to, we need to move faster in terms of incorporating that information into the planning process for planning prescribed burns so we can keep using this important tool. Well, I, again, and I, I say this as a, as a layperson, it would seem to me, based on what you're saying, is things are changing so quickly that we can't expect necessarily that everyone's going to know every protocol that needs to adapt to the changing environment. If that's the case, then it seems to me the answer has to be we got to stop doing this until we can figure it out. Yeah, so uh, we actually unfortunately can't afford to stop doing this. And the reason is, is because the risk that uh, these landscapes and the people who live in them face from wildfire, fire, regardless of the source, is really high. 
So there are other big, fast, hot moving wildfires burning in New Mexico right now that weren't started by the Forest Service. And so the, the only, basically the only tool we have at our disposal to help manage that risk is reducing the amount of vegetation in the forest through things like prescribed burning. And so it, it is a, it's a challenging place to be. Uh, it's a complicated situation that's going to require, uh, you know, more, um, I don't know, safety checks uh, going forward to deal with uh, some of the lack of information that we have and, you know, and that we in the scientific community are trying to acquire quickly so we can provide to forest managers. But it does seem that the state officials are angrier about this than you are. It seems that you are more understanding of what you view as the cause and effect, and state officials are more taking the more the layperson approach, which is the approach I've been taking, which is you have got to be kidding me that the U.S. Forest Service just set an enormous fire in the state of New Mexico. Yeah, and, and I can understand that. I think the, the story that's not getting out is uh, there's another fire happening on the same national forest uh, in the Jemez Mountains, uh, due west of where the Calf Canyon Hermit's Peak is occurring, and it's called the Cerro Palado Fire. On the first day, that same fire, or, you know, that same wind event that caused Calf Canyon to blow up uh, caused the Cerro Palado to blow up, and the reason that it didn't burn over a community that everybody was able to evacuate and that the uh, wildland fire crews were able to keep houses from burning down was because the Forest Service has been doing about a decade's worth of work in there in terms of forest thinning and prescribed burning. And so that fundamentally altered the way that that right. fast-moving wildfire came into that community. It slowed it down. Well, look, that's the reason we have someone like you on the show. You're an expert. You understand this stuff better uh, than I do. I just have lots of questions, and it seems really, uh, really hard to believe. But... Um, it's important, and I appreciate the context you provided for us, uh, Professor Hurtow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.